Welcome to the Tech Stack Sprint. For the next few videos, we're diving deep into the tools that power UI UX design. And today we're tackling Excalidraw, which is a wonderful tool to get started with UX design. So let's get into the world's easiest Excalidraw crash course for 2025. Excalidraw is specifically useful to get started with brainstorming, getting all of your ideas out on the board and also wireframing. I use it all the time for wireframing especially. Excalidraw is such a useful tool when you want to get the ideas in your head out as a brainstorming software, but more importantly, it functions so, so well as a very customizable hand-drawn wireframe tool. And it has been my favorite for so many years now. So let's just get started. To get started, you're just going to open up Google and search for Excalidraw. All right, so we'll get started by opening up Excalidraw. Just go to Google and search for Excalidraw. Let's go to Excalibur.com and now all of the data of that we create here is saved in this current event of the browser. Let's explore the UI a little bit. So from the top toolbar, you can select the shapes that you're going to be making. This is the normal pointer, but you can also create a rectangle, a diamond, a circle or an arrow. You can also create lines, scribbles, text and add in images. You can also erase elements and use a couple of extra tools as well. For example, the frame tool where you can create a frame which can contain other rectangles, elements and shapes. We also have the web embed element, but we'll get into that later. We also have the laser pointer element with which you can point and show things off when you're presenting your layouts. The text to diagram element lets you convert text to diagram using AIs and the wireframe to code element lets convert your wireframes into code. But both of those are AI features and we'll get into those later. All right. Now let's talk about the styles that you can use with each different shape and element. So for example, if you're creating a simple rectangle, you can change the color of the outer stroke, the internal background color and the type of fill. So this type of fill can be hasher cross hash and solid. Your background and foreground colors can also be transparent if you want or choose from these preset combinations that work perfectly together. One of my favorite features with Excalibur is you can use a color palette which is auto set. So for example, you can use this orange for the outer stroke and also you can use this orange which is in the exact same location as the strokes orange and it works perfectly with your outer orange. All right, you can also choose a stroke width for all of these elements. So for example, if I was making a squiggle, this would really, really become important because how wide the stroke is would determine how it comes off. Also, I want to talk about the different styles of stroke. So you can choose the width of the stroke over here. You can also choose whether the stroke style is going to be dotted or have points outlining the whole thing. You can also choose the amount of sloppiness. So this can be very, very architectural or it can also be an artist like sloppiness and it can also be extremely sloppy like this which is cartoonist basically i feel like this just becomes much clearer when you're using plain stroke the architectural sloppiness looks like this the artist level sloppiness looks sort of like this and the cartoonist level sloppiness is obviously much more sloppy also you can choose the way the edges look so the edges can be pointy like so or the edges can be rounded off. Also the amount of opacity, which is how opaque or how visibly transparent the shape is can also be chosen. Also, you can use the layers button to choose whether send this element to the back, bring it to the absolute front, send it backward by one level or add it or bring it forward by one level. You can also copy this element and duplicate it once again by clicking on this button or delete this shape by clicking on this button. You can also link this to any link you want. For example, let's do google.com. And now this shape is linked to google.com. You can do this for text and that creates amazing hyperlinks. All right, let's just, let's just create a real wireframe. So a wireframe starts by creating a base rectangle. Let's just create this rectangle at the base. We'll add a stroke and also make sure the color is set to white. The stroke style is going to be medium level sloppy. And now we're going to start by creating a navigation bar. So we're just going to add a simple navigation bar at the top. The color is obviously going to be different, but it doesn't exactly matter which color it is. So you can still choose to decide the colors after the wireframing is done. Let's just add a blue navigation bar and then we can also do a hero section. Let's create a simple circle 
for the hero section so this circle is going to be big bold in our face and this is why we need to change its color to be pink pink has a deep level of contrast with blue which is why i'm sort of relying on this now let's also add a slider so we'll have a couple of other elements which are slightly smaller and these can be scrolled through these are the different options that the user can actually scroll through so let's just change the stroke and the background color let's now also add a logo so we'll just add a simple stroke this is where the logo will be you can reduce you can select the stroke and reduce the width as well and now we can also change the shade just so that it becomes nice let's also add a menu icon so we're just going to add a couple of lines to draw the menu icon all right so we'll also add the titles and descriptions for all of these elements let's add this as the title all right and now we'll also select these and change the colors so we're just changing all of the colors and now i feel like we need to add the title but we need to make it broader so we can add it to the top because obviously we already have the logo and the menu on the sides and it would be much better to have a title at the top to be able to show the visual transformation from an element in the background going to the element in the foreground so let's just create a different title so let's just create a different title and i'm just roughly squiggling the text that needs to be added just so we know where things are going to go let's change this to the color pink and obviously we need to add it to the top just so it's visually very clear and we don't need to make the navigation take up the entire width so we'll just reduce the places where it's present at click on this button to duplicate the shape and now we'll place it in the background and now this is the title present at the top and we can also add the description present at the bottom and this is going to make our ui slider wireframe ready now that we have this entire wireframe ready we just need to add a couple of finishing touches select this whole thing and we're also going to press ctrl g to group the entire selection and now we're going to share it to share it you can share it as a read only link if we share this link with people by copying it now people can view our wireframe in excalibur itself you can also do a live collaboration session with other designers you can also click on the menu button and save it to our disk or share it as a link or save the scene to our excalibur plus account but my favorite option is to export this entire wireframe as an image and then import it back in figma so i'm just going to press ctrl shift t or press this button and i'm going to export it as an image you can save it as a png svg or copy it to clipboard let's download this as an svg because when our ui is present as an svg then it becomes easier to work with as a wireframe in figma because in figma you can change the colors and styles of svgs if you are still working on the wireframe and experimenting with it there are a couple of options that you can look at if you want to make sure you only need to export the selected elements have a background or not have a background have dark mode enabled or not enabled and i feel like this is very effective because you immediately get to see what a dark mode variation of the wireframe that you've just done looks like you can embed this scene as well where the scene data will be saved into the exported png or svg file so that it can be restored from it this will increase the exported file size you can scale it up to twice its original dimensions or three times its original dimensions or you can also copy this entire thing to the clipboard if you want to paste it back again into an excalibur or similar project and that was it for all of the complicated menus you can scale this up to zoom into the screen and you can scale it down if you want to scale the entire page back down you can undo your last action or redo it again and that was it for the world's easiest excalibur crash course i hope you liked it this video is part of the tech stack sprint where we take the tools and technologies that power ui ux design and break them down completely the last video we did on this topic was the figma crash course so do check it out and i'll see you in the next video